Um, my name is uh, Lan Van Allensen and I'm a researcher at Stockholm Resilience Center and today I'm going to present on uh, the role of most recycling in the Amazon uh, based on research that I and uh, colleagues at Stockholm Resilience Center have done. Uh, so first of all, what is most recycling? Well, if you think where the precipitation, where the rainfall comes from, it starts somewhere. So you have water in the ocean that evaporates, it's transported with the wind and comes down as precipitation. But then it happens again over land. So you have evaporation from land, the trees that transpire, and gets transported, and precipitation. So the part that takes over place over land is what we call the terrestrial most recycling. And it's important because it means that what we do on land can also change um, our rainfall. So it's, um, it's a mechanism where we actually can manage our rainfall. Uh, this is a video, I jumped it, this didn't work. Um, but on a mean annual scale, this is a map of how it looks like where um, the preservation comes from land. So the, the more red uh, in this figure, the higher percentage of rainfall comes from other land areas. So you have regions um, in southern um, South America, in West Africa, in um, northern Eurasia, where a lot up to 80% of the rainfall on an annual basis that comes from our land areas. Um, and the reverse map, so where the evaporation goes, is this. The redder the area, the more of the evaporation that happens in this area goes to rainfall over land. So you can see that in the Amazon region, a large portion, up to 80% again, of the rain, uh, evaporation comes down as rainfall again on land. Um, I think I skipped this. <laughs> um, and this is a um, figure of how the moisture to the, so this is the lineage of the Amazon River Basin. And so this figure shows where that moisture comes from to uh, feed the rainfall. And this is where the evaporation goes. So you can see how the winds, uh, now that I didn't have the wind out, moves in from this area down to uh, the forest and then it stops up by the end and then goes down again uh, south to feed the La Plata Basin. So there are three perspectives I would like to share on the importance of most recycling in the Amazon. The first is the role of the water flows for the forest and also for downwind landscape resilience. I'm going to be quite brief because Iris Star is going to talk about forest resilience right after, so I'm going to be very brief about the forest resilience. Um, but what we know is that uh, the states of savanna and forest that as Carlos also spoke about it's dependent on how much water uh, there is. So at certain point where the rainfall um, is reduced to a certain point, you're going to be in a zone where uh, you're maybe unstable and with other feedback mechanisms will tip over from a forest to a savanna. So the role of moisture cycling comes in here because as you deforest uh, or because of climatic put, uh, perturbation, the precipitation is reduced, you might see a forest loss further downwind. And as that forest is lost, you further reduce evaporation and then reduce rainfall again. So suddenly you have a self-amplification effect in this um, Amazon forest system um, that s sort of commits you to certain um, extent of forest loss. Um, but it's also not so only matter to forest resilience, because you also, so in, uh, this is a study where we looked at what happens if we would desertify, uh, like all land turns into desert. It's quite unrealistic, but that's like an experiment, what happens? So first, what happens is that you have, so we deforested this area, um, turned it into desert, and looked at what happens to evaporation, it's reduced. And then uh, what happens then is that the entire so where the moisture goes, also have a corresponding reduction in rainfall. And the rainfall patterns uh, is changed. So not only the total annual mean rainfall, but also the length of the dry season is changed. So suddenly, your dry season is, your, uh, the growing season is shortened by half, and which have implications for your agriculture crops, like maize and um, pastures. So, so um, which totally affects how, uh, how much crop yield you can have and 
with implication for social systems. Uh, the other perspective is also then what is the role of forest for the water cycle. So it, this is another model experiment we did that we looked at what is the total human land use change. So we changed natural land into pasture and into cropland um, and this is the corresponding evaporation change. So in blue we have an increase due to irrigation and in red we have a decrease uh, due to deforestation. So in this Amazon region uh, we have mainly reductions. Um, and this is again looking, focusing on the Amazon basin, what we see on the right hand side here is a um, reduction in rainfall and on this side is what happens to the evaporation sink region, so where the uh, evaporation sink in the, oh, so where the evaporation goes from the forest to downwind area. So you have reduction in rainfall within the basin and also downwind the region. But of course when you change the evaporation and precipitation, what happens is that you change the entire cycle. So you change the precipitation that enters the basin, you change the cycling within the basin, and you change what's going outside the basin. And that is your total river flow. So if we sum it up, uh, you have a precipitation change, your evaporation chain, a river flow change that uh, happens with most recycling. And so what we see that one thing that is important to note is the line chain reduces both evaporation and precipitation, so it changes its recycling. But it also changed the river flow estimate. So if you would not take the atmospheric moisture flow into account, you will have a different river flow change than uh, when you take that recycling into account. So in this case, the moisture recycling is actually buffering against the mean annual river flow increase in the Amazon. And it also changes if we look at which countries did influence the river flow. Uh, whether you take that most recycling into account, it also changes the distribution, the nation share of who is contributing to river flow change from land use change. And the third perspective uh, is the governance perspective. Because if we look at the most flows between nations, um, you can uh, sort of see, so this is for this South America, and uh, you sort of see that the Brazil, this is ocean, the Brazil is sort of feeding uh, most of flows to the others, but there's also a sort of a cascade effect. Uh, and they all look different depending on how the flows are going. So in this work we looked at the different types of most of flows between countries. And in Amazon region we mainly see Brazil as sort of a wa water tower, so that we have a one nation as provider most to the other nations. And then what does it mean? So right now we don't have any governance whatsoever of most recycling. But what does it mean if we would have to have these different structures? So if you have a type one or type two, quite simple network, does it mean that you can eat more easily, determine what is in the course, and maybe you can look at ecosystem service payment or bilateral treaties? Or if you have a more complex network, even more, much more complicated. But here we're actually in type two, so yeah, not very complex system. Um, and um, this is also just showing the source countries of Amazon forests and the sink countries of Amazon uh, forests. So you see that there's a lot of different countries involved, um, although Brazil is the main actor. That was on the mean annual scale, and so I also just wanted to point out from a governance perspective, because in the past we only looked at the mean annual flow. But because of seasonal changes in most recycling patterns, uh, we also see that there's quite a variations in the distribution of national share of most recycling fluxes. So Brazil, for example, uh, on a mean annual basis, Brazil uh, share of rainfall from the rainforest is 45%, but in dry season, it actually drops to 33%. So in the dry season, when rainfall is maybe most needed, um, uh, when most vulnerable, uh, the share uh, actually climbs up. So Colombia, for example, goes to 15 to 22 percent. So who's uh, most concerned of the Amazon also depends on when you need the rainfall. So this also has implications for uh, governance and consideration of who is responsible and uh, temporal consideration. So to summarize, most recycling in the Amazon, it's a feedback mechanism 
um, it has potential for self amplification effect and has implications for forest resilience that Aristotle will talk more about. Uh, it's also a multiplier of deforestation impact, uh, particularly in dry season, in drought season, when you have the seasonal intensification of moisture cycling. So the land's role becomes more important when uh, rainfall is most scarce. And also in terms of reduction of the rains for season length, uh, rain season length. It's also an ecosystem service provided by the rainforest. It's also inherently transboundary. It crosses basin boundaries, it crosses nation boundaries. So um, this is also a common that is currently not governed. Do we need to govern it? Uh, how? Um, I leave that as a question. That's all. Thanks.